This is Anime Out of Context, a comedy review podcast hosted by a weeb of the highest order alongside a cynical man who knows nothing about anime. Our show features spoilers, explicit language, and poor fact-checking. Neither of our hosts are experts on any topic and none of their opinions should be taken as fact. Thank you for listening, and enjoy. Hello and welcome to Anime Out of Context, the show where I attempt to explain the sometimes weird, sometimes wonderful, but always hilarious world of anime. And 100 episodes I've stared into the eyes of death, 100 episodes I've stripped away my soul, 100 episodes, and until my dying breath, 100 episodes of paying the weeb's final toll. Here we are. That was oddly poetic for you, Remington. I'm impressed. Why, 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 thank you. Uh, I'm Remington Chase. I'm Sean I Wallace. suffer a lot. <laughs> yeah, we, we, look, it's a hundred episodes, we're allowed to goof it up. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's a celebration here. Uh, t- times are crazy, but here we are, a hundred in. Nobody thought we'd get there this long. By nobody, I mean me. I'm really just talking about me. I, I had no idea it would last this long, and here we are. It's amazing, to say the least, man. Over two years into it, uh, nearly a hundred anime seen. You, wow, man, you've seen more anime than you've seen any other kind of content. I wouldn't, I would not go that far. I've consumed a lot of other content. Uh, However, I've seen more different anime than even many weebs. Now, that does, not on a per episode basis, but definitely for, uh... For breadth, not quite depth, but the breadth. Yeah, of the you've thing. interacted with a lot of different flavors of anime, and a lot have made you want to spit them out and discuss. But some you've actually quite savored. It, 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 there have been uh, a, a good number of anime that I've actually enjoyed. Uh, they are in the minority. I overall, I, I've not been convinced that anime as a whole is good. However, I have been convinced that some anime are good, and dare I say it, a select few anime are amazing. They're great. They're phenomenal. Okay, clip that audio clip for later, guys. We could use that in the future. <laughs> That'll be nice. Uh, that, that goes in the blackmail folder right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look, there's so much in our blackmail folder at this point that it's amazed that it's amazing that we're still making content. <laughs> it's, it's true. Uh, granted, uh, our audience hasn't even seen half of it. Most of it is locked away with Dylan. In yeah. his editing shed. Yeah, to be fair, His though, editing shed, of course, being an offshoot of your basement in his cage. Yeah, uh, to be fair, though, <laughs> uh, if anybody uh, is going to blackmail us in the future, chances are it's going to be him. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he, he is, like, the choice. Yeah, like, he's, mm, there's not a whole lot of competition there. He has the most ammunition, so it's very likely he's going to fire the most rounds. So, uh, speaking of uh, shooting all the rounds into me, murdering me, uh, hopefully quickly, what am- Anime are we doing today? It's the great one zero zero. Praise be, we've gotten this far. And what the f- have you got in store for me? Yeah, uh, I I've been thinking about this one for a long time. And had uh, the world been in a similar place to when I started planning uh, the one hundredth episode, we might have uh, we might have uh, done something grandiose, something out of the ordinary, something truly fantastical, truly amazing. Maybe even with visuals, it's hard to say what would have <laughs> happened. But if you couldn't I mean, tell we by can, the audio we can promise quality, anything. We, still... we can promise anything because it's not happening. <laughs> we we can say, hey guys, we we rented out an amusement park for episode one hundred. Unfortunately, you know, as things go, yeah, no, we were there, there gonna... was a firework ceremony set up, laser light show. We were going go to go celebrity guests. Together. It was going to be great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what 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 celebrity guest were did did we definitely schedule on for the show, Sean? Oh, I uh, think I, we got Danny DeVito actually. We we had Danny DeVito ready. Uh, but unfortunately, just things things can't always pan out. Uh, so us us and the 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 Veedmeister, uh, Mr. Vito, the the big DV toe. Uh, <laughs> I just call him Dan. <laughs> It, it, it didn't work out. So uh, th- this would have been the single greatest episode, not only in anime out of context history, but podcast history. Yep. Uh, but now you get this. <laughs> yeah, no, the McElroys ain't got nothing on us. 
<laughs> so, uh, with, with that said, with uh, that, as those waves of disappointment uh, wash over us, uh, what, what have we got in store instead? <laughs> what what disappointing mundane nonsense do we have? Uh, well, I didn't want to make things super mundane, so I thought, what w- what better way to celebrate a hundred episodes than with a bit of a twist on our usual uh, formula? Okay, uh, frightening, frightening. I'm 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 a feared. I am spooked. Yeah. Because Remington. Because because Sean, I, as you know, I don't like that which is unfamiliar to me. I mean, that is the premise of the entire show. Um, and although although I I dislike anime, I I what I don't want is at, at least I have the routine. <laughs> <laughs> And don't get me wrong, it's a bad routine. I don't like this routine. But it is routine, and that's comfortable. So so going beyond that is a little bit spooky. You know, that's fairly understandable, Remington. After all, comfort is uh, what we millennials really, really thrive on, like, heavily, to the point where we're not really doing a whole lot. In fact, most of us weren't really too bothered by the quarantine until, you know, like, too much time had passed. But that aside, we uh, are doing something not too different. Not too different. Uh, we're still going to cover an anime today. Uh, yeah, that, that's what I feared. <laughs> <laughs> but I figured we would alter alter uh, some of the stakes S- stakes stakes remington after all i'll be honest i was unaware there there were many stakes in this show <laughs> I mean, the, I feel like I have not been informed. <laughs> the primary stakes usually is your sanity, my dude. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I usually put those on the line, and uh, often I am the loser in that bargain. This is very much true, but in this case, I figured I would up the stakes a little bit by offering something uh, that you know is a bit different and a bit of a challenge for us, because I want to have this be a challenge episode, Remington. All right. Well, as as our audience knows, especially from the the Discord chronicles from long ago, I am always in for a challenge more than I reasonably should. And I'm going to take advantage of that willingness to put yourself in harm's way uh, to offer you a proposition. Oh, oh okay. Uh, does, so I can neither, like, agree or disagree. I have a choice in the matter, is what you're saying. You do, you do, but I feel like you'll agree to the challenge, mostly. Alright, alright. Because let, 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 let's hear it. I've come to realize something, Remington. We've been doing this for 100 episodes. It, it's true. That is a factual account. And all of those episodes episodes could be described as well mm, a little bit blue uh, y- y- what <laughs> <laughs> sure okay Raunchy, crude yeah harsh yeah, it's true yeah yeah <laughs> ah and there you've stumbled upon my challenge remington <laughs> I have a simple challenge uh, for the both of us. Oh, no. I have had several people uh, want to listen to our show, but have been scared of the idea of an explicit episode. Mm. So, (laughs) I would like to challenge you, Mr. Remington, to do an episode with me with no cursing. All right. uh, I have some questions. Okay. Uh, So, if you say no, then we, to to any of these questions, Dylan, just just bleep it out. Uh, I'm just going to ask a few words. Just give me a a yay or nay. All right. So, uh, no, no. Hell? Mm, Maybe. (laughs) Uh, nah. Uh, waffle. You know, that one's actually okay. (laughs) (laughs) No, of course it's not. Dylan, don't actually leave that in. Uh, what about... (laughs) Uh, what 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 about uh what if what what about but like we're really angry and playing a racing game uh we are far too <laughs> white to even joke about that <laughs> so many many uh would, would disagree especially on twitch uh <laughs> well I like to think but, our, our fan base is a bit more classy than Twitch, even if they are weebs. They're, they're degenerates, but they're our degenerates and we love them. All right. Okay. I think I understand. Uh, I, I'm willing to attempt to do so. Sure. Sure. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. I will. I am now very aware of what I am saying. Uh, and that that's difficult. It is very difficult. And I figured that would make it a very fun and interesting challenge. And the stakes come in. The first person, uh, from the recording, uh, in this recording to properly swear, uh will have to suffer a penalty. Uh, I've thought of a good penalty for myself because it's one that gives me a lot of work and I am terrified of that prospect. Oh, hell yeah, make him work. Uh, I f- and you'll have to tell me if you think this is a good penalty for me or not. Uh, I haven't thought of one for you because I figured I'd give you the same courtesy. But if I uh, break first and I say a naughty, naughty word, then I will open up a uh, voiceover Fiverr account where people can uh, pay the minimum amount to essentially make me say whatever the... 
they want me to say. I, I mean, I, I, I like that. I can, I can support that. Sure. Because, sure, you know, why not? who wouldn't want me to say all kinds of embarrassing things or voice opinions about things that I don't want to talk about? Uh, okay. I, I, I would like to add to that. Okay. Um... I, 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 I agree with that, except I get one free Sean voiceover. Oh, God. I get a Sean voiceover on the house. <laughs> oh, oh, no. So it became that a lot more dangerous. dangerous. Now it's not just, oh, maybe this is a cool little side thing to do. Now, now <laughs> there's some danger. <laughs> Remington, you know our fan base. There was danger to begin with. The, fair enough. There's... There definitely is danger to begin with. But now, uh, now the danger is go has gone from probable to certain. Like, people are going to pay me five bucks to say all kinds of nasty, horrible things. So, such as what? Mm, not getting me that easily. <laughs> Just, for example, if you, could, if you could go into explicit detail. <laughs> no, I can't, Remington, because I want this to be an episode that my mother can listen to. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. Um... Fair, fair enough. I, I, I think that's a, a fair deal. Uh, I'll, I'll let the people at, at Discord, I, I, as the man of the people, I will let the people decide on my behalf. Uh, though they, they already know. In, in, the, in the chance, if I lose, the people will decide what the stakes are. <laughs> You're just too worried to set any kind of risk for yourself, aren't you? I trust the people. You do realize they're going to ha probably have something along the lines of forcing you to watch an entire series in one sitting, right? They, they would never do that. I, I love them. They love me. We have an amicable relationship. It's going to be fine. How many uh, times have you offered to have the fan base set the stakes and have them all be like, oh, he has to watch all of this. Oh, he has to watch this. He has to consume <laughs> the most vile, rude, and unusual type of uh, Japanese animated flick I can imagine. I mean, I'll be honest. That, that's, that's very common. Uh, however, I have faith in them. And with my faith in them, uh, Sean, uh, I have more faith in them than I have faith in you, uh, which which brings us back to square one. What are we doing today? <laughs> Fair enough, Remington. So to crown off 100 uh, episodes of Anime Out of Context, I figured we would go back to a, a classic discussion that we've really only touched on once or twice, and that is Ghibli. Ooh, okay, okay. I can get down with the Gibbles. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I'm scared to ask. <laughs> oh, you know, good old Mr. Gibbles. I'm down with him. We tight. We homies. You know how to hang? Yeah. You can hang with Mr. Gibbles. <laughs> <laughs> that is the worst cereal mascot. All right. So we so we got Mr. Gibbles. Uh, now, so far, out of have we we've only done one Ghibli. Two. Two. What was the second one? We've done. Spirited I almost away lost. Kiki's delivery service. <laughs> Oh, of course, Kiki's. Um, all right, so we, we got Spirited Away, Kiki's. Now there's there's two. Wait, no, there's three that I see a lot. So I would guess that it's going to be one of those three that we have not done. Okay. There's the one with the big fat cat. Okay. Um, it's, uh, oh wait, I, mm, I know it. I know it because I am an expert and You're claiming to be is, an anime expert. It, oh, of course. Uh, everyone knows that. Uh, and that, the one with the big cat is... My neighbor Totoro. That is correct. Oh, I, I, I almost lost once again because I was about to have a victorious battle cry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this game is really hard for me. Uh, yeah, uh, I know. That's why I wanted to give you a challenge. After all, people two, are just waiting for which one of us is going to break first. Two, we have the princess manana mana mana mono the kissing virus we have uh, <laughs> prince it, it's princess mononoke correct oh man i'm nailing this and then the third one uh which is possible is uh and that i also see a lot is howl's moving castle uh and that that's the only one i'm confident in uh, wow. And so, yeah, I know, right? I, it's very rare that I actually get three things correct in a row. Cherish that, listeners. It's not going to happen again. I mean, to be uh, fair, though, you did have to stumble your way for, for, for the first two. Excuse me? Uh, not if our boy Dylan edited it nice and smooth, right? And I'm sure he did. He's going give... it with extra Dil emphasis on uh, <laughs> the torture and like, oh, look Dylan, how give me a heck yeah if you're on my side. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but so. So, uh, my guess would be that it's one of those three because they're the ones I'm familiar with, and thus they're probably the most popular ones. Uh, just a quick question. How many Ghibli movies do you think there are, Remington? I would say that there are, like, Quentin Tarantino, Mr. Gibbles is is going for a, a full ten. A full ten, huh? Gibbles ten. The, the Gibbles decalogue, as I like to call it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a word. It definitely is a word. Is it? 
it it does it sounds it sounds like another uh uh numeric uh pronoun word you've come up with in the past. Not only not only do you not understand basic Japanese, but you don't understand basic English either. So is it one of those three or am I mistaken yet again? <laughs> well, first of all, how many does how many does Mr. Gibbles have? Uh he has quite a few. Well, okay, first of all, I should clarify. Uh Mr. Gibble is not a real person. <laughs> Excuse me? He's real to me, darn it. <laughs> Uh, Gosh, name darn! That is it. Usually associated with Ghibli is uh, Hayao Miyazaki. Oh, well. yeah, I mean, he's he's no Mr. Gibbles, but he's cool too. I mean, if anybody could be given the <laughs> the, the moniker Mr. Gibbles, uh, he would probably be the one. Uh, but no, no, no. Uh, since uh, 1986, uh, with the uh, film called uh, Castle in the Sky, uh, there have been about uh, about 15 or 16 different uh, Ghibli films. So, I mean, I know it completely by laws of rounding you were off by a whole 10 hey listen listen if dylan just edits in me saying the right number like i'm sure he will dylan give me a heck yeah if you're on my side then once again i am nailing this (laughs) dylan you're not allowed to swear either (laughs) keeping this one pg folks Because it is a hilariously bad uh, time for both of us because we are uh, notorious for our uh, colorful... All right, so so uh, there's there's a whole bunch of of Ghibli. Which one are we delving into? Well, I know sense. of three of the available like twelve options. I am going to give you one of those three. Oh, I'm a genius, and not because uh, they're ones you know. No, 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 no. That that would be a a, a tame reason, a paltry reason, a reason. No, that here, really let, let me go. Let me go deep lore on this. You're going Princess Mononoke because, as you've declared previously on the podcast, it's your favorite Ghibli. I I am impressed you actually remembered that, Remington. God, I'm good. <laughs> huh. It turns out when, when my mind has to focus on not using colorful language, I can actually uh, hone in on weeby bull crap. <laughs> ah, you almost got there. You almost let a little poop slip out, and that would have been very bad. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. All right, so, uh, so that's my guess. Locking that in. The $100,000 question, ready to move on to $250,000 if I'm right. Well, Remington. Regis is is there. He's waiting. He's he's postponing it. He's nervously looking at me, acting like I got it wrong, even though we all know I got it right. Well, you're almost right. You're about half right. <laughs> because, Remington... Because, of course, it's not Princess Mononoke, it's Princess and the Frog. So close. Yes, my favorite Ghibli movie, Princess and the Frog. <laughs> All right, so uh, which one is it? Well, Remington, I am going to... Another tradition that we haven't done in a while is I'm going to give you a choice. You get a choice between two. Oh, okay, okay. And you have to be very careful about which one you choose because it will (laughs) very drastically change your dialogue depending on which one you choose. Okay, okay. So, So here's the thing. Whichever one we cover, you won't be able to swear at. So, are you going to take the easy option that is the uh, critically acclaimed and very beloved and incredibly wholesome My Neighbor Totoro? Mmm and not swear throughout the entire second half, even though we are known for being especially heinous during children's anime. It, it, it's true. The mo- Just think back to Charizard. Exactly. Or are you going to take the action that will also heavily limit you? Because if we go through Princess Mononoke, my favorite mm. Ghibli movie, there's all kinds of prime opportunities for you to make fun of me directly with all kinds of deep, colorful language. And all right, so you, Sean, you, you're, you're coming at me from from two sides and and here's what's difficult about it on the one hand the opportunity to tear you to shreds uh in in unfiltered language and tear everything that you you will love and hold dear is one of my favorite pastimes and i worry that by limiting my choice of, of language i won't be able to uh to completely wreck childhood sean the way i like to wreck him Mm-hmm. However, I also want my prediction to be correct, uh, because as we all know, I am rarely, if ever, wrong. So uh-huh. that's the conflict at hand here. Do I go the big cat 
or the princess that I literally don't know anything about. <laughs> it's quite the Sophie's choice, if you will, or the uh, Mr. Gibble's choice, if you prefer. <laughs> Mr. Gibble's choice. All right. Uh, you know, you, well, we're going to decide this like, like men do, uh, strongly, decisively. You're going to flip a coin, aren't you? Excuse me? I don't <laughs> know what you're talking Come about. Come on, what, man. What Be this? a man. Make a choice. Decide on your own merits. Choose Obviously, your fate. Obviously. I am going to make a choice, and that choice, decided by me and me alone, uh, is my neighbor Totoro. Okay, Remington. Or, as I like to call it, Tails. <laughs> God damn, Remington. <laughs> what? Get it? I chose, I, I chose Tails for, for Totoro because he's a big cat. Oh, what if I told you Totoro doesn't have a tail? What? But he, I, is he not a cat? I, I swear I've heard that he's a cat. He's a cat, isn't he? I'm lying to you. He has a tail. Oh my gosh, you you almost tilted me into losing. <laughs> That's the idea, all right. man. All right. Um, all right. So can I give my, because at this point we're reaching like cultural milieu whenever we handle Ghibli stuff. Exactly. And Ghibli, so Ghibli is so pervasive in uh, even Western culture, culture that uh, you, even if you've never seen the film, you can at least, when you hear the name Totoro, you're like, oh, that's that big cat thing, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, here's, here's my predicted synopsis. All right. First, you have the main character. Just give me the, the you know, I'll, I'll take care of the main character's name. Uh, first you have the main character who is named Jeffrey Chan. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> Jeffrey Chan, he's, he's a lonely, he's a lonely little boy and he has no friends and his parents are like, they're, they're not like the worst parents, but they're neglectful. You know what? No, actually his parents are dead. He stays with his grandma who loves him, but she's very busy. And so, uh, he constantly goes and he, he's, ex he explores a whole lot because like grandma's busy. What are you going to do? And maybe there's like a neighborhood girl who he's also friends with, uh, who you think is going to be more relevant than she is. And she's like sort of relevant, but like just not as much you were expecting so he goes and eventually he meets Totoro which is uh in the woods and Totoro is just this big old cat and Totoro takes like to wait oh what happens oh this this is good okay so <laughs> so what happens is uh Totoro can't speak he's just like clumsily walking around uh or if he speaks it's like a Pokemon Totoro and <laughs> So, so, uh, just for some perspective before you get into this, uh, this movie came out in 1988. Perfect. Uh, so, uh, give, give Totoro a perm, uh, to make it nice 80s. <laughs> Uh, so then, uh, obviously, Jeffrey, Sa Jeffrey Chan uh, wants to be befriend Totoro, and uh, Totoro at first seems friendly, but then he starts wandering off. Jeffrey Chan follows Totoro uh, and gets lost. Now they're lost in the forest, but they're together. Uh, and all of a sudden, Jeffrey Chan is in a whole new world. Uh, insert Aladdin line. Don't do that. Copyright. Mm -hmm. uh, so so then they explore this new little forest world, uh, and, and that's the synopsis. So you're telling me me that Totoro is an isekai. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh. Totoro is an isekai. Oh no. That 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 I'm I'm sticking to that. I think I nailed it. Okay. Well, would you like me to slip some minor corrections in there for you? I mean, I guess if you want to repeat what I just said then sure. Go right, ahead. Let's start with Totoro. Uh Totoro, not a cat. But yeah, I mean, but I swear I've heard him referred to as a cat. Oh, I mean, he's got some cat-like features. Not a cat though. How, do people call him a cat sometimes? Where have I heard that he's a cat? Is that it's a thing that would have happened or am I crazy? It's the easiest way to describe him. He, Because he's technically... So in, uh, in, in lore, in the deep Totoro lore... Uh, <laughs> Totoro is a kind of is a uh, forest spirit of of sorts. Oh, all right. So so far, I'm nailing it. Uh, <laughs> I, want, I want that to be known. And according to uh, Miyazaki himself, uh, has stated that Totoro is a, a unique spirit creation that is a combination of a bunch of different animals, uh, things like owls, uh, cats, um, a couple other things. Because I'll tell you right now, once you look at Totoro, you'll be like, okay, I can see why people would call it a cat. But if that's the case, oh. that is a very, very sad hat. <laughs> it's like someone who right. had a vague idea of what a cat looked like and just kind of free-handed it. All right, so, so far, I have not been wrong at all. Continue. Second of all, 
Uh, sorry, what was what was your main character's name? Jeffrey Chan? Uh, yeah, Jeffrey Chan. Uh, so, uh, the main two characters are, uh, two girls named Satsuki and Mei. Y- that, you know, uh, that's, that's their nicknames. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are you telling me that these two sisters have a collaborative nickname that is simply Jeffrey Chan? No, no, I, I'm saying both of their real name is Jeffrey Chan. <laughs> Oh. What you said, that was their nicknames. Oh, I see. So their parents they, were the their worst kind of parents, and not only they named They really them... wanted a boy. Oh, 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 wow. Oh, wow, oh, wow. They pre-named their kid. Okay, all right. I'm pretty sure pretty sure Satsuki or May could be a guy <laughs> name, but, you know, whatever. whatever. But the parents That's went with fun. Jeffrey Chan. Mm. All right, so uh, continue. Uh, two for two so far. Uh-huh. Uh, the second point, uh, you said that both parents were dead. Uh, no, both are alive. For now. <laughs> How dark do you think my neighbor Totoro is, Remington? <laughs> How dark do you think this lovely little movie about a big fluffy cat spirit? <laughs> That's not actually a cat. Uh, uh, and Adventures Within. How dark do you think this movie is? I, well, I'll be honest, Sean. I assumed that it was a a spinoff of the Nightmare on Elm Street st- saga. So that's that's where I was coming from. <laughs> <laughs> if you Totoro in your dream, you Totoro in real life. Like it's just common sense. <laughs> Totoro walks up to you. I'm your boyfriend now. <laughs> Oh, Totoro, no. Oh, man, good old Totoro. <laughs> uh, all right, so, uh, yeah, so that, that's that's just pointing out, no one lives forever. <laughs> <laughs> so three for three so far. Uh, so the basic synopsis, Remington, is uh, uh, this family, uh, uh, Tatsuo Kusakabe, uh, relocates himself and his two daughters, Satsuki and Mei, to the countryside to be closer to their mother, who is uh, hospitalized, uh, hospitalized, mm, words, 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 hospitalized. No, no, that is the correct way to say that. Yeah, huh. yeah it, it just started just start that sentence over. Yeah. Uh, so, My Neighbor Totoro is about Tatsuo Kusakabe, uh, who, and his two daughters, Satsuki and Mei, who have, uh, relocated to the countryside so that they can be closer to, uh, their mother, who has been hospitalized due to long-term illness. I'm, I'm not gonna say that I called it, however. Hey, not dead. It's just delayed death, when you think about it. That's just life, Remington. You've just described <laughs> life. Oh, the state of not being right. dead, that's life. Darn right it is, Sean. Jesus. Uh, as the girls that grow acquainted with rural life, uh, May encounters a small bunny-like creature in the yard one day. Uh, chasing it into the forest, she finds Totoro, a giant mystical forest spirit whom she soon befriends. Before long, Satsuki too meets Totoro, and the two girls suddenly find their lives filled with magical adventures in nature and fantastical creatures of the woods. I mean, I'm just gonna say it. I nailed that shit! I mean, except for all the minor details being completely wrong, yeah, sure. Who needs minor details? Says the man who nitpicks every minor detail of every show we've ever covered. (laughs) Even details that wouldn't bother, you know, a normal human being. You always have to bring up and be like, hmm, that's not that great, though. Why did that have to be blue? Why couldn't it have been red? That's what I'm here for. So, in a nutshell, Remington, this is just a cute little uh, fantastical uh, adventure kids movie with no real distinct plot to speak of as much as it is just kind of a experience. I mean, I'm okay with that. Like, people will remember one of my flaws with, with uh, Kiki's Delivery Service was when it started to have a prominent plot. Like, towards the end where it was like, oh, let's just do this now. When it was just, like, people being human. And I've mentioned, I think in the Kiki's episode, I I said, Gibbles is at his best when he focuses on world and people and, like, the humanity of things rather than plot. So I think I will probably really like this. We're gonna get so many emails about Gibbles. (laughs) Maybe we might get an email from Mr. Gibbles himself. I mean, he has been quoted as saying anime was a mistake, so I don't know. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't know if that's completely true. I, I I know it's a meme, but I don't know if he actually is, is said those exact Of words. course it's completely true. You saw it on the internet. I heard it from you. All these people he- are hearing it from uh, a very reputable podcast. On the internet again. Yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's a feedback loop. It makes sense. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, but without further ado, Ren, there's not really much else I can tell you. You made it through the first part pretty easily. No, no cursing, no swearing, aside from all the stuff that Dylan had to bleep out before the challenge started. Oh man, could yeah. you imagine if I had committed you to the challenge without telling you about it first? That would have been so good. That would have been on brand for you. It would have been. If I was feeling a bit more evil, I might have. But nah, it's hard to be evil when you have Totoro involved. So without further ado, let's go watch the amazing classic Ghibli movie, My Neighbor Totoro. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back after consuming the amazing film known simply as My Neighbor Totoro, the iconic film from Studio Ghibli, the film that literally solidified the mascot for this entire studio. And the question is, Remington, did it live up to your expectations or are we going to have to cut you? <laughs> in a violent and unfortunate manner. Well, as I've established before with Mr. Gibbles, Mr. Gibbles uh, does. Oh, we're starting this again. <laughs> Mr. Gibbles does almost everything extraordinarily. He does amazing characterization, amazing humanity, beautiful art. Uh, the, he he has a great score for all of his things. Delightful characters in a, a great world, right? Uh, but one thing that I've consistently been critical of him, uh, and I suppose this is a, a link to note, is plot bit fucking rough, and then endings. Also, a little bit on the rough side. Uh, things tend to, like, we, 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 the third act of Spirited Away was just a hot mess. And then you had Kiki's Delivery Service, which was great, with a very weird, dramatic conclusion that just did not belong anywhere close to it. Uh, so, then you look at something like Totoro, uh, and it... It has the least amount of plot out of any G Mr. Gibbles film we have seen so far, uh, and it is definitely the best one we have seen so far. <laughs> okay. Now, are you saying that just because it's filled with cute creatures? I mean, that that helps. Uh, granted, uh, w one of those creatures is just more soot sprites. <laughs> Yeah, I'm noticing the, the great. They they don't call them soot sprites in this. They call them soot spreaders or dust bunnies. Uh, they're, they're the same thing, basically. Yeah, they're the exact same thing. They're based on the same, uh, you know, idea. Yeah, it's just the ones in Spirited Away had a bit more. Uh, let's call it um, ingenuity. Yeah, I, I I would say that my neighbor Totoro. It's if you took Alice in Wonderland and gave it. Uh, just made it, like, more casual, made it just like a slice of life. If Alice in Wonderland was just slice of life, you have my neighbor Totoro. Uh, okay, so you're taking the story of an acid trip gone bad that traumatizes a young girl through a variety of different weird, <laughs> strange people and monsters, and you're comparing it to this, where it's, you know, a wholesome family plays around with magical creatures the, in the woods, the and there's, like, no conflict whatsoever. The comparisons are so, so strong, though. You can see the inspiration. Uh, there's uh, a scene for, uh, especially the one involving May. Uh, May, the youngest daughter, she explores uh, in, in sort of, like, the backyard forest area, and she's chasing after these adorable little bunny creatures. And she finds a big, big old tree, falls into the tree, and it has a scene that's very reminiscent of Alice in Wonderland. And then later on, when we, when we meet the cat bus, and we will talk about the cat bus, cat bus definitely has a lot of Cheshire qualities about it. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying that, uh, oh yes, it's only Alice in Wonderland. However, I'm saying that there is definitely inspiration there. Oh, I'm not disagreeing with you. I just like to point out your opinions in the most uh, dramatic way possible so that people <laughs> have a chance to get angry at you. Uh, they will anyway. You know that, Sean. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, this is supposed to be one of the most uh, wholesome films that we've covered, uh, as well as one of the most classic films. I mean, this is one of the Ghibli's first few films. Arguably, it's most popular to a lot of people. After all, 
Totoro, everyone knows what Totoro is. Well, okay, nobody, <laughs> like, not everyone knows what Totoro is. But yeah. if you say Totoro, you, ima- you immediately imagine the big gray fluffy thing. We, we can identify and recognize Totoro. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, this film came out in 1988, if I remember correctly, so... Uh, yeah, and, and it definitely, bad. it holds up. Y- you open and there's a nice little intro that's super duper charming uh, with just some illustrations you have. Uh, May and a bunch of bugs and different things happening. It's just really cute, really cute soundtrack. Uh, you, and, and then it opens up, you get shown the characters, and immediately you learn so much about the characters. Uh, I will so, 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 so often on this show, uh, especially after, like, you've pulled the bull <laughs> rule, and I've had to stick with characters for, like, six hours straight, and I still... Uh, Remington? No, Jack... about them remington yep you just cursed twice oh no (laughs) 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 that didn't take long at all we're not even five minutes into the second part and you've already whipped out double curses i forgot I, I totally, it just was not in my mind. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm taking the L on that one. Uh, I, I deserve yeah. the L on that one. Uh, oh, boy. Oh, God, not even five minutes in. I know it's been a minute since we recorded the first part, but it hasn't been that long. I, uh, all right, from this point forward, I'm an innocent and pure boy. So, so as I was saying... So uh, one of the things that I commonly deride in other anime is once you've used the the BS rule <laughs> and uh, and we have to watch a whole lot of it, right? And after six hours, I'm like, these characters have not been developed very well at all. And then it's like, oh, but you just need to watch more. But then you look at Mr. Gibble's work. Mr. Gibble's, one thing that he does consistently is that a a character is on screen for like 10 seconds and you're like, yeah, I I got them. I understand them. And that's because every single detail, especially when it comes to characterization, is so masterfully done. Like, you'll also see this in like some Pixar and some Disney, uh, just like the, the real big heavy hitters. Uh, what will often do this where just so much uh, about a character is shown every single moment like you have the sisters you have uh, the the very small one may and then the older sister satsuki and their wow, relationship you actually gave them their correct names that's what rare i for you. know uh it, it helps that they're on the simpler side uh but their dynamic is so so entertaining to see so fun to to watch and all the little details like uh for a while, you have uh, Satsuki going around, uh, looking around. Uh, I I can't remember. They were, were they looking around for like soot sprites, the soot spreaders, or something like that. I can't remember. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. They uh, were exploring their new house, yeah. and uh, they caught a glimpse of a bunch of the soot sprites, and they were like, "Oh, what are those? Let's go ser- search for them and find them." Yeah, and so uh, through this very cute little scene, you have Satsuki uh, going around and uh, and and looking around. And just a second after she does anything, May will do the exact same thing. Uh, and it's so, so cute and endearing. And often it's, when... It's, it's very much the uh, uh, mimicry you see with a lot of young kids uh, and their older siblings. Oh, yeah. And they, they capture, like, childlike wonder, determination, as well as, like, childlike stubbornness so well in so many moments. Uh, and, and so both of the sisters are just phenomenal as, as so is the dad, the dad, great character, lovely guy. Oh yeah, no, he, he is the biggest sweetheart and I've said it before on the show and I'll say it again. Anytime there's a, uh, father figure who's, uh, he's not technically a single father right now, but he might as well be at this point. Yeah. Uh, like the mother is in the hospital and, and so uh, father is working on it on his own for a bit, which is like. Anytime that a show or movie can uh, show me a single father character and show just how amazingly hardworking and kind and wholesome they can be, uh, it, it it warms my cold, dead uh, 
heart. And I, and this is a great example of what a uh, what it's all like to be a uh, single parent, as well as how it's how even though it's difficult, you can still be a fantastic person and parent. I also think that it's a great example of some positive masculinity. So often people like talk about toxic masculinity, blah, 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 all that stuff. Uh, and, and it's important to point that out, sure. But it's so nice to see some positive masculinity. Like he is hardworking, uh, but he's also like super caring and emotionally supportive. He's going to be there for you. He's going to be reliable. Uh, and he's also going to be like sensitive and open. Uh, just a great role model for basically any person out there uh if you can aspire to be more like him you're doing pretty darn well uh, okay here's the question do you remember his name uh, heck no brother <laughs> <laughs> uh, i suppose i couldn't how many times too much was from said, you, you, you remember two japanese names most of the times he's referred to as dad <laughs> his name is tatsuo oh tatsuo okay uh, but yeah, and then you have like the grandma character, uh, nanny character rather. Uh, she's real solid. Uh, then you also have a, a young boy who uh, who's in the neighborhood, Can Kanto, the Kanto region. <laughs> uh, close. You're one letter off. It's Kanta. Kanta. Ah, oh, so close. So close. Uh, th that, or Kanta. Uh, uh, pronunciation's weird. Japanese. What, yeah. what can you do? Uh, but but with with him, uh, I I think that he may have some like underrated characterization uh, throughout the story as well. Uh, oh yeah. It, it's like, like it's subtle development and uh, not like ridiculously subtle. Like obviously you'll notice it, but I feel like it may not be admired and appreciated as much as it could. Uh, because of everything else going on, but, like, all the details of, about this young boy are really good. He's got a lot of personality for as little as he, uh, uh, I don't want to say contributes. Like, because he's, he's not the biggest presence in the movie, and not everybody's going to immediately remember him when they think of this movie. Yeah, but, but nonetheless, he has some, he has some nice moments, and he's definitely not, like, uh, a main character, but he's significant enough. Uh, but nonetheless, so with, with the story, uh, you have the move into the new house, eventually... While, uh, while May, the little one, is exploring the backyard, uh, falls down a tree after going after some mini Totoros, little rabbit-type creatures, uh, and they're, they're adorable. They have so much personality as well. Uh, and so then she meets Totoro, and Totoro, oh, oh, he's so cute. He's so adorable. He's so delightful. What, what, also what a man. Also a little bit terrifying, if you think about it. Uh, yes, yes. There's definitely, th this... This movie could easily be Coralinified. It would not be that hard. <laughs> like, it would not no. be that hard to be like, oh, cute and whimsical, but also dark underbelly. Yeah. Just keep Tim Burton away from this franchise. <laughs> yeah, truly. And like, because otherwise he's gonna splash his <laughs> all over it, and it's not gonna be a fun experience for anybody. <laughs> exactly. And so you you just get to experience the the life of the family a little bit, and so. It shows them, like, starting to go to, or at least Satsuki, starting to go to school, make some friends. Uh, at, at one point, May has gotten frustrated about something, and uh, Satsuki has to take care of her at school. They go home. Uh, there's a nice little character moment with uh, Kanta, because it starts raining very heavily, uh, and May and Satsuki are just being drenched. They find a nice shrine uh, off the path and just stay there, because uh, there's a covering. Uh, Kanta comes uh, wandering by uh, with his umbrella and initially walks past, but then he just reaches out and he doesn't explain himself. Uh, and this is similar to something he's done before. And he just stretches out even further and then he just drops it and runs, which is a, a delightful little character moment uh, for him because like it maintains his like sort of struggle to socialize, especially like with girls, especially with new people, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but it shows that, like, he's caring as well, right? Yeah, like, it, it definitely uh, emulates that kind of childhood crush uh, uh, feeling and thing you see uh, very clearly and very uh, straightforwardly. And it just, it's, it, it conveys so much in so little time. It's just so good. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so they go, they handle that uh, eventually. And this, th once again, there's not really a plot to speak of. It's just, like, sort of a series of events that happen, uh, which I'm mm -hmm. totally okay with. Like that is fine for me. If if you just keep the interest going uh, with with fun, nice moments, I'm fine. And so eventually, May and Satsuki, uh, they they get proper 
uh, proper rainy gear on. Uh, they got their boots and coats and an umbrella. And they, they want to wait for their dad at the bus stop. Uh, and he's not... He's not on the bus that he was supposed to be on, so they have to wait quite a while. It starts getting dark. They're at the bus stop. It's raining quite a bit. Uh, and then there is, like, possibly the best moment of, of the entire movie. Uh, because as they're just uh, sort of getting drenched uh, on this, uh, at this bus stop, they just turn. And then just all of a sudden, right there, is Totoro just staring blankly ahead in the rain with a little leaf on his head to keep him from getting wet. And that was and a, it was so good. That was beautiful. Uh, Remington, that is the most iconic uh, scene in the entire film and has been parodied and referenced so many times I've lost track. And... Like, I've seen pictures of uh, that scene, uh, but in the moment, it was so good. It's such a delightful, silly, whimsical, funny moment. I mean, it's the cover of the uh, of the film for a reason, you know? Yeah, well-deserved. And they, they give him uh, an umbrella... Uh, the, their dad's umbrella, and he he enjoys the water falling not only from the sky, but from the leaves and the trees above. Uh, he jumps around. It's a cute moment. Really good. And then Cat Bus. Uh, we're introduced to Cat Bus at this stage. <laughs> cat Bus is a bus that is also a cat. Yeah. Uh, the Japanese name for those who prefer it's uh, Nekubasu. Uh, <laughs> cat Bus. <laughs> It's, yeah, see, who says Japanese is complicated when you have Nekubasu? Uh, and so you, you got good old Cat Bus, and Cat Bus shows up, picks up Totoro. Everything's great and dandy. Uh, and it's sort of when we get to the uh, the third act I, I use ish, uh, where sort of a plot develops uh, because Mr. Gibbles likes to have some sort of. Uh, some some sort of build and some sort of uh, climax, even though it's a bit strange. Granted, this one, the sort of plot and climax introduced to My Neighbor Totoro fits a lot better than the one introduced to Kiki's Delivery Service. Uh, you'll remember, I w just felt like it didn't belong. You had a blimp going at uh, a clock tower and it was high stakes and action thriller and that just didn't fit the theme. It felt very out of place. Uh, meanwhile, and we still get emails about it. Thank you for reminding <laughs> folks. I stand by that opinion. Uh, Kiki's Lover Service got a favorable review, but that moment was just not a great one. Fortunately, the climax that's built to here, it makes a lot more sense because uh, May gets really frustrated because they hear that their mom, who is supposed to be home uh, within the, the next week or so, uh, th the hospital sent a telegram. Uh, they don't know exactly what's going on, but they know that their mom is going to have to be there a little while longer. They're worried. They're stressed. Uh, this caused some tension between the sisters themselves. And uh, May, eventually, she gets lost. And uh, the the nanny and Satsuki, obviously, very worried. They go out looking for May. Uh, one, one moment that I really liked is that there's a scene, uh, because the nanny finds a, a little sandal in, in a pond, right? Uh, and is worried that it might be May's and that May, like, may be drowned in the pond. And so, like, the whole community just rallies around and they're all helping. And eventually, like, Satsuki returns and she confirms, like, that's not May's sandal. It doesn't seem like she drowned in, in the pond. Uh, and everyone... Everyone's like, oh, okay, okay, it's fine. And, uh, like, even just as a super throwaway line, like, one of the ensemble in the neighborhood is is just like, uh, hey, you guys would have done the same for us. It's all fine. No worries. Like, just establishing a, a real sense of community even within these just, like, not super important lines. And it's those details that really, really bring Ghibli stuff up. Uh, nonetheless... Eventually, Satsuki goes and she asks Totoro for some assistance. Uh, and Totoro, might I add, uh, there, there was one scene where Totoro was just like uh, a big fuzzy Mary Poppins. And they, oh, yeah. They yeah. grew a big tree and he was, he was spinning around and had an umbrella. And it was a weird moment. It was a delightful moment. Very cute. Uh, he's just a big fuzzy Mary Poppins. And so big fuzzy Mary Poppins shows up and is like, I got you. He doesn't speak, but you can feel that affirmation. And summons Cat Bus. Uh, there was an unintentionally, like, really dark humor moment that came with this part. 
Oh, yeah. Because, so Satsuki uh, wants to, to find May, right? So she gets into Cat Bus. And Cat Bus, uh, as many buses do, say where uh, says where it's going on uh, what I guess would be its forehead. And so that... Yeah, close enough. I mean, yeah, well, it's either, it's like forehead... The anatomy of the like... Cat Bus is very elusive. <laughs> I, I need an ana- uh, uh, cat bus anatomy for beginners. The Da Vinci's cat bus, if you will. Yeah, there we go. And so uh, the route, it changes, uh, but before, and it changes to May, but before it changes to May, like, because it's just shifting, like, chunk, 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 chunk. Uh, before it gets to May, the first one it changes to is a cemetery shrine, <laughs> which is... <laughs> It's it just like for that moment, it's just like, imagine how messed up it would be if that's the route they went. If Cat Bus, like, still super happy, super jazzed about it. Satsuki, she's excited now. She's going to get back to her sister. And then Cat Bus just takes her to a cemetery. Like, that would be one heck of a decision. <laughs> I would have supported it. <laughs> I mean, hey, child murder. Uh, as, as we've said many times, uh, anime out of context, especially Remington, is strongly supportive of child murder asterisk in fictional media. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's important <laughs> to note that point. In fictional media is mildly an important caveat. And here, and here, I was just saying, what if that's where she was? Was just at a cemetery. It didn't have to do with her life or anything. She just happened to be there. That would also. You just had to go and actually kill the cute little child. Good work. <laughs> It would be, I'm just saying, it'd be a bold choice. Uh, and so, yeah, they get reunited. Uh, everything's fine. The The mother is also fine. Things are just nice and cute. Everything's a-okay. Uh, and and that's, that's my neighbor Totoro. And it's it's a delightful little film. It's, it's simple. It's super slice of life. It has such strong characters and worlds and relationships. Uh, you can tell that all of these characters sincerely care about each other they have such strong bonds with one another uh and and it's just absolutely delightful it's definitely held up and it is so far i think my favorite uh mr gibbles right now it goes totoro kiki and then spirited away which you still hate i don't hate spirited away it's it's like a solid out of on my scale for enjoyment purposes it's a solid 5 out of 10. Uh, I recognize it's a great movie. It has a really bad plot with... Not a really bad plot. A really bad third act with a mediocre plot. Uh, but a really great world. Really fun ideas. Uh, I expected it to be better. Uh, but yeah, so far, Totoro... Okay, hold on. <laughs> so far, to- because I'd heard Spirited Away the most. But no, Totoro, Kiki, Spirited Away. That's That's my list so far. All right. I'll be honest with you, Rem. When we started doing this show and I got uh, we got done with our 10th episode, which also part of the reason it's our 100th episode. So I figured, you know, might just as put well, a zero uh, on it. Can't wait. I to... was going to say square it, but that's fine. Hey, perfect. Can't wait to when we get to uh, to episode a thousand and we do, oh, another, yeah, <laughs> and we do another Gibbles. <laughs> I love how you just casually committed to like ten years of podcasting. Oh, I'm I I'll be I cannot commit to that. I I already two years is more than I was anticipating. Uh, <laughs> and so I, I I'm giving myself a pat on the back for that much. Uh, ten I years, mean, no fair. guarantee, no guarantee in any way. Uh, it's very likely we will not we will not uh still be doing this in 10 years uh but well, who knows hard to say man we we don't know what the future may hold well, i mean who we knows don't. maybe one of us will tragically get eaten by a cat bus and the other will have to continue the podcast in honor of their spirit oh man i hope that i'm the one who gets eaten by the cat bus uh. oh don't be ridiculous remington <laughs> You don't have enough childish whimsy to have that happen to you. Oh, crap. Uh, with, with childlike whimsy, uh, but before we finish uh, everything, uh, just one question, Sean. I think All we right. should both identify the other as a Totororian creature. Totororian. Yep. That, I don't think that phrasing is going to uh, catch on, my dude. <laughs> I, nonetheless, I want you to ascribe me a creature, and I will ascribe you a creature. Oh, dear. Huh, let's see. I could do this a variety of different ways. I could be very fun and creative and actually take it seriously. You know, try and decide 
man, which of these strange, interesting creatures has the most Remington-like energy? Uh, or I could just be horribly mean and awful and say that you are just, you know, uh, an incidental uh, creature. Uh, but that would be very counter to the spirit of this show, I feel. And honestly, honestly, man, I think you're probably one of the Totoros, whether it's the uh, medium-sized one or the big one, simply due to the fact that you have an almost fetish-like love of rain. <laughs> I, I love rain so much. Rain is delightful. Uh, uh, you know, I was gonna say that you were uh, the the blue the the blue Totoro with the the bag of uh, bag of nuts, uh, which is. <laughs> well, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Keep in mind, this is our good, nice, wholesome show. I, what are you inferring? I I wasn't. I mean, I I'll be honest. For the joke, I almost said that you were cat bus for very different reasons, but I avoided that because we're wholesome right now. Uh, <laughs> just just because I I think there's a, a nice level of uh of of mischief there, uh okay. as well as uh theft. I think works because you are of course famed kleptomaniac. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You, I, you, I steal all stolen, kinds of little things. You like everyone's hearts. Uh, as soon as they hear you. Uh, wow, that was... That might have been <laughs> the nicest thing you've ever said to me on this show. So so you can be Blue Bandit Totoro, Stealer of Hearts, and I will be Mary Poppins Totoro, <laughs> Adorer of Rain. And there we go. And then I so guess that wait, leaves... We're just, what we're that just, leaves... We're just the different size Totoros. <laughs> which leaves Dylan to be the very small white Totoro. Uh, well, I mean, he is very... Well... He's pale. He is very pale. He he needs some more melatonin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, so so there we go. Uh, we are the th the three Totoros, uh, uh, and, and it's all settled. We're dropping our mixtape this fall. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would I would love a Totoro rap. One second, uh, one oh, second, you're, everyone. You're you're gonna take time out of everybody's day to Google Totoro raps. Huh? Anyway, back on track. Uh, if Dylan decided to, to cut all of that out, uh, couldn't find a Totoro rap, did find some cool lo-fi Totoro beats. To chill or study to. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, so overall, My Neighbor Totoro, just absolutely delightful. Uh, also, like, one, one thing I haven't even commented on is the character designs. Mr. Gibbles always has great character designs. And what's great about it, so many other, uh, especially very modern anime, uh, can often look a little bit the same, uh, which isn't Looking terrible. Looking at like, UA1 pictures. They have a strong visual style. It's interesting. Uh, it's visually appealing, uh, but it does somewhat blend together. Especially uh, one, one thing I've commented on before is how you'll have like a character who says, oh, wow, she's the prettiest girl in school. And then she looks pretty much like all of the other girls. Uh, that yeah. that doesn't happen in in Mr. Gibble's films because everyone has such distinct visual styles as well as everyone just looks like like a very normal person. Uh, they, they don't look extremely dramatic or intense or attempting to be like wildly beautiful and charming. They're just normal looking people and uh, and, and they, they look have a very pleasant. squishy look to them is the way I would describe it. <laughs> <And that's laughs> They, they've got a lots nice of, normal lots of curves, squishiness. lots of soft lines. You know, it, it feels very human. Yeah, and and it's just it's just very pleasant. Uh, so overall, uh, to summarize my thoughts about my neighbor Totoro, uh, it's wildly human. Uh, it really reemphasizes to me that Gibbles does best when he doesn't really focus on plot too much. The less he focuses on plot, and the more he focuses on everything else. Uh, the better, and he absolutely nails everything else, and I adore it for that. I, I See, at this point, I can't decide whether or not you're referring to the entire Studio Ghibli as Gibbles as a person, <laughs> or if you're referencing, you know, Hi Mi Hi ugh, Hi words, 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 or if you're referencing Hayao Miyazaki as Mr. Gibbles himself, as, like it's his rap name or whatever. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, it's all the same. <laughs> They're indistinguishable for me, Sean. Yeah. Because it's not like it takes hundreds of people to make a fantastic film. It's just behind one Mr. Gibbles. The the uh, the Legion-esque entity that is Mr. Gibble. <laughs> the OG Gibbs, baby. Jesus Christ. You'll always be the OG Gibbs in my heart, Sean. OG Gibbs is my waifu. <laughs> uh, 
God dang it, Remington. Oh, but yeah, My Neighbor Totoro, man. If you can't hate My Neighbor Totoro. If you do, I can't guarantee you have much of a soul. It's okay if it's not your favorite, but you certainly are not allowed to hate it. it it's so pleasant. It's so heartwarming. It's so charming and delightful. Uh, one of the most charming shows we've seen easily, and it's just so beautifully, beautifully crafted. Yeah, and that is kind of what helps really cement uh, Ghibli's legacy. Uh, that and uh, a couple other films, if I remember correctly, but this is the one that really cemented a lot of the stylistic choices and a lot of character design stuff. And man, I, I'm not an expert on Ghibli films. Uh, I'm working on it. I mean, we've covered three so far, so eventually I'll, we'll have to probably cover all of them. But as far as I can tell, I feel like Totoro is just the real starting point for a lot of people who want to get into Ghibli and want to try and have a idea of what everything he, he is about stylistically. Like the only thing that this uh, film in particular was missing heavy emphasis on was a lot of uh, nature-based stuff. And by nature-based stuff, I mean uh, respecting nature-based stuff. Like there's enough of it, like enough to, for a uh, kid level, but not the extreme amounts you get in some uh, more modern Ghibli films, which is a nice change of pace. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully, Remington, now that you have a favorite Ghibli movie, uh, the ones I show you in the future will at least uh, compare or you'll at least enjoy them to a similar degree. I mean, so uh, far, it's I'll just been an uphill slope. That is true. That is true. But at the same time, Remington, uh, my favorite Ghibli movie is arguably one of the most popular. It's like one of the big four top Ghibli films out there. And if you hate it more than Spirited Away, I might have to come and kill you myself. Quarantine be nothing in my way. See, I almost swore there. <laughs> I'm gl I'll be honest with you, Remington. I'm glad you screwed up in the first five minutes because I, I don't... I don't imagine how this could have gone any better for me. <laughs> there, there's a part of me that that's that's genuinely uh, a, a little embarrassed because I, I, before this, like just just a, an hour and a half or so ago, uh, I I had reminded myself personally. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, but you can't forget about that. And then I just totally I I got swept up into the Totoro uh, and so much that you cursed while we were talking about a kids movie. <laughs> It, 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 tisk, tisk, tisk. it wasn't my first it won't be my last and if we we're gonna go to our discord to uh decide on what my punishment should be i'd like to remind everyone as man of the people i i represent all of you and your side and so love me uh <laughs> And I will say that uh, I don't think it should be uh, my punishment that I came up with because I feel like Remington would have too much fun with that. <laughs> yeah, we'll, 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 we'll let uh, the people decide. Uh, they'll come up with some ideas. We'll probably have a vote uh, once they do about the best ones on the Discord. Uh, and, and so if you are interested, uh, when this episode's released, we'll also send out a, a link for our Discord on our Twitter. Yep, that we will. Uh, and uh, speaking of which, uh, before we get into our house cleaning, I do have one question left to ask you, Remington. Any yep. chance you'd want to watch uh, My Neighbor Totoro with me again sometime? You know what, Sean? I would absolutely love to. Uh, it's a delightful show. I'm totally for seeing it again. Excellent. And we shall, because every time I'm feeling sad, Totoro helps pick me up. Uh, not literally, though he does seem very strong. <laughs> And with that, thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, Got to do a little bit of house cleaning. Like we mentioned previously, we do have a Discord, and I will be dropping a link to that Discord. Uh, they usually only last about 24 hours. Uh, we aren't really uh, comfortable setting up a permanent link uh, yet, unless you are on our Patreon, of course. Uh, but we will uh, try and drop a couple more regularly so we can uh, encourage community growth, because after all, Totoro has a strong community message to it. Um, but speaking of our Patreon, if you'd like to support us, uh, that we have one of those. Uh, if you have a little bit of extra cash lying around and you want to gain access to all kinds of interesting bonus content made by uh, your favorite trio of weird internet-based weebs, because I'm only saying that because I can't think of any other peep, any other trio of weird-based internet weebs. Uh, they're they're uh, probably out there. They're probably out there, but I like to think we're their favorite. <laughs> uh, mostly so that I can, you know, not cry myself to sleep as much at night. Uh, but if you'd like to support us and have a couple bucks to spend, then uh, you can head on over to patreon.com slash anime out of context 
and uh, toss a couple coins our way. We will continue to make more uh, and more content, and as time goes on, there'll just be more and more to enjoy on that uh, platform. Uh, but one of the lovely rewards that people get is the chance to be shouted out uh, on this podcast, you know, a, a, th a, a public thank you, if you will. And Remington, I'd love to know who we are thanking this week. Well, of course, we always want to send a th thanks to our bland bitch protagonists, as well as our magical girls, uh, Toto, Totoro, of which is my favorite magical girl. But a step above that is our Yandere waifus. With our Yandere waifus, we have Anne Miles to go, Sarah Birch, Kazu Morocco, Leos123, Hayden Lecker, Anonymous Gamer, Ultimate5401, Yuliana, Salty Pretzel, Glenn Michael Dolan, Ross Palmer, Jacob Livingston, Xerix, H. Wood, Kyle King, Farmer Weeb, Alexander Nasiasenyo, That One Weeb, Chuck57, Andrew Rowicki, Grant Stevens, Matthew B, Devin McCutcheon, Chris Salas. Then, after the Yandere waifus, we go a step further. We go across the pond. We feel the magic in the air as we thank our Elijah Wood Boy Wizards. We got Brady Weinbarger, Chase Fredette, Delina Perez. Thank you guys so, so, so much. But that is not all, for there exists a tier higher than even those, and upon this highest tier is the White House, the Shefonomusko tier, the Cory in the house. On that, we have, of course, our patron saint himself, none other than Saint. On the flip side of things, we have the almighty sinner, then we have Zachary Shirley. Shirley, uh, Shirley, Shirley, I, I don't have one this week. I don't know, man. Sean, give me a, give me a Shirley pun. <laughs> Shirley, you're kidding me, Rem. You couldn't think of a joke based on his name? Perfect. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Zachary Shirley. Oh, then, my God. I'm then gonna... we have Cassidy, Ugh. Justin. Uh, we can do the same. Cassidy, Justin, Justin. Cassidy's great. Uh, <laughs> then we have... Okay, hold on, hold on, Rem. It was right there. You could have been like, Cassidy, just in time, maybe. You know, something just... I don't know it if that's right much there. better. You... Then we have uh, we have the touchy diplomat, uh, who uh, is, is definitely helping us out. Uh, our, our ambassador to the outside world. Uh, a, a little bit on, on uh, the, the, the touchy side, but we still think that they put in good work. Then the silicone specter. Uh, nice and, and spooky. Uh, I was going to make uh, a not wholesome joke, but this is a wholesome episode. We keep it wholesome. Uh, especially since I'm pretty sure it's silicon and not silicone. Uh, what, hey, listen. Uh, <laughs> then... Look, man, I know I know you're, you're a very free-thinking person. And you've got a lot on the mind at all times, but not everything <laughs> has to go back to that direction, my man. Hey, listen. <laughs> My brain works in mysterious ways. Uh, then we have Theo Knoll, uh, who, judging by their, their picture, is celebrating uh, Christmas at this time, and they are, are helping us provide uh, an early Christmas for Dylan. Maybe he'll actually get uh, a gift this year, and it's thanks to you, Theo. Uh, and when it comes to. Are you to sure it's not Noel? Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? Uh, that, it'd make a lot of sense. I uh, mean, because I don't. I feel like Noel would have the letters in the reverse order there. Noel I, makes. A lot more sense to me. Theo, settle this uh, discussion with us once you hear how we pronounce uh, your name and tell us which one is correct. Uh, and then finally, uh, the the very, very aptly named Take Your <laughs> Money Dylan, uh, which is very pointed. Uh, it, it feels like Dylan just has some like mob connections and and this is how they've decided to engage with him. It is, it is, it is very good, uh, especially since, you know, people find ways to get back at us uh, in the most weird and wholesome ways. And I love that we now have publicly announced uh, Dylan's failure to uh, listen up for once. <laughs> Uh, and so to absolutely every single one of you, thank you so much. Uh, it's absolutely mind boggling to us that we've reached this level of support. And as a super small reminder, uh, we know that crazy stuff is going on. So if you can't give us money or if you need to lower the tier, that's fine. You don't need to justify your decision to us. 
we understand. Yeah, like, we'll be fine. Like, we, we have shelter. <laughs> we have some food. We want you guys to first think of yourselves and make sure that you are all comfortable and happy and safe before you uh, consider helping us out. Uh, but if that is the case and you cannot help us out monetarily, that is perfectly fine. Uh, what you can do, though, uh, if you still would like to support us, is you could leave a review for us on whatever platform you listen on, whether that be Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher, Spotify, or if you really want to help us grow, word of mouth is an excellent way to do it. And if you would like to contact us directly, whether it is for a comment, question, feedback, or recommendation, then you can either tweet us at AnimeConPod on Twitter, or send us an email over onto AnimeOutOfContext at gmail.com. Once again, thank you all so much for tuning in. We love and appreciate you. Stay safe, wash your hands, and as always, I can't say my tagline. <laughs> <laughs>